A whole lot of bunker fish down there. Hi, I'm Steven, and I'm a flight instructor at the Academy of Aviation in Farmingdale, New York, and I'm here to show you the difference between flying a Microsoft Flight Simulator and flying the real airplane. I have been flying since high school, uh, altogether I'd say a little, almost 10 years now. I started out kind of following my dad. It turned out I wasn't too bad at it, and I've been keeping going ever since. My expectations, I would say, pretty high. I'm thinking that video games have come a long way, no, but I'm gonna see what it's like. 172S model, G1000, just like we got at Academy of Aviation. What do I got a right and a left, or it doesn't matter. Wow, I got radio coming in and everything. Well, here we go. I got clear for takeoff, so I'm going full throttle. Here's some engine noise, which is good. And put a little bit of rudder here. Doesn't require a whole lot. Might be a little misleading to the student. <laughs> Because normally when you add full throttle on one of these things, it's going to want to yaw left because of a lot of our torque forces. Ooh. <laughs> I'm curious now if we have flaps down. <laughs> and that's how you take off with full flaps and not stall the airplane. A little squirrely, I'm not going to lie. Button's definitely switched up. The shape of it, pretty similar. Uh, they, got, they nailed that part. I'm used to having rudder pedals, so my feet are are a little confused here, not having to do nothing. But uh, it is pretty to look at. The graphics are cool. I like how I can flip back and forth between the cockpit and the, the plane behind me, like any true video game should let you. Let's see if I can, there we go. Flaps are up, we should be normal here. All right, let's not do that again. Crash an airplane, no I have not. I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be here if uh, I answered yes to that question. Those bugs can be worked out in something like this before you get in the real airplane. All right, I'm gonna go for some of these trim controls and see if I can get this thing to stop being so squirrely. All right, now it feels like climb speed is almost normal. I'll level off up here somewhere and, I don't know, do a couple maneuvers. Rudder is there to keep your nose pointed where you need it to go and correct for the aerodynamics that are setting off when you use the ailerons for a turn. On the yoke here, turn the yoke this way and that creates roll. This is banking the airplane using those ailerons and moving the controls forward and back is going to pitch the airplane. And then finally we have yaw. Let's see if I can get this to... Yeah, there we go. We have plenty of yaw. That may or may not be a rudder trim because it feels like it wants to stay that way. <laughs> this is funny. I see some kind of checkpoint over there. I'm going to start aiming towards that. Your visual landmarks are kind of like checkpoints. Bridges, tall towers, the coast, the mountains, trees, you know, towns, high populated areas, not so populated areas, anything. Roads, you navigating based off of what you see around you and then also what's on the chart. Then you have dead reckoning, which is a little bit more calculation involved for time, speed, and distance. Now all you do is measure it out on a map, plan out a heading to fly, correct for wind, and then time it. Before you know it, if you fly that heading for that amount of time, you're going to end up there, hopefully. Instead on this game, it looks like I'm just heading towards some kind of uh, big blinking post in the sky. All right, I did my best. I mean, it's pretty realistic, actually. I would prefer it not to be so um, squirrely and sensitive. You know, when you get in the real airplane, that over-controlling feeling, it's, it's not going to work well. Let the airplane do what it wants to do and then just apply gentle control inputs and guide it along its way and let it fly. Now we're going to hop in the airplane and show you the real thing. The plane we're about to get into is the Cessna 172S model, a late model G1000 equipped glass cockpit aircraft. I'm about to take you guys on a regular training flight so we can compare it side by side to the Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm excited to take you guys up there. Let's get in the plane. Two via Golf Alpha, please. Five, two, five, two, Charlie. Echo ramp, hurry to taxi. All right, we are crossing one, right a runway. Uh, ultra it's not runway active. One. We're clear to do so. Flipping on the lights, looking both ways, nobody approaching the party. We can move it around with these rudder pedals. Look, I push on the left, it goes left, push on the right, back on that yellow line. 
All right, so basically I am guiding us on to the runway to center line. Normally the simulator starts you off right on the runway, so there's not a whole lot of taxi involved. However, you know, I didn't get too deep into the game. Maybe it does. I'm going to add full power, slowly okay. and smoothly. All right, normally the airplane wants to sort of yaw to the left, so I'm adding some right rudder here. Once we're at full power, I'm just kind of guiding us along right about here. Just start pulling back enough, keep the wings level, and just hold the nose right there on the tree line. And that's your normal takeoff. So we'll have a little bit, little tiny control inputs here and there, just to correct for wind, hold the nose right where we want it, but uh, for the most part, when you add full power, and you keep your nose pointed right here, almost near the horizon, you almost have your uh, best rate of climb speed. Just keep it climbing, there's traffic inbound. Roger, keep it climbing, buddy, Charlie. And we're headed out, so this is basically the same view that we had when we took off in the simulator. And right about here, we're going to start to level off, and a cruise. Alright, cruise check is complete, and we're flying. So, the sun is peeking through and directly heating up the ground that we're passing over right now. Different paved surfaces absorb and give off heat a lot quicker than, you know, surfaces covered with vegetation or water. That's why flying over the land right here can be a little bit bumpier. It'll probably Got smoothen it. out a little bit once we get over towards the ocean. But, yeah, this is what it feels like. For the most part, you have the line straight out here of the horizon. Might be a little hazy out there, but you're using that as a, a major reference. So you hold yourself until it feels like you're not climbing or descending. And that's your specific visual uh, straight and level point. It's always good to cross-reference your instruments. I mean, uh, they're, they're going to be the major indication as to whether you're at the correct altitude, whether you're coordinated, what your airspeed is. So it, for the most part, when you're flying in visual conditions like this, it's 90% outside and, and kind of 10% inside with quick little glances every now and then. Uh, no, I'm just level here at 1,600 feet. I'm going to bring myself right in here parallel to the runway we're going to land on and uh, maneuver ourselves around when we're, when we're cleared to do so. So what I'm doing is just reduce the power slightly, help us keep on coming down, put our pitch attitude pretty constant. Thankfully now, this time we have rudders. As we come in over the ground, straighten out a little bit, especially with rudders, power comes out, just gently flaring the airplane. Making our way back in. And we made it. I think as far as the flight simulator goes, that's really the most you'll get out of it is you can take some things home with you to practice and then uh, you know eventually hopefully that'll turn into better performance in the airplane. So we just touched down and as you guys could see flying the Microsoft Flight Simulator just a little bit different here and there from flying the real airplane but overall I think it's a great experience for people to have before they ever set foot in a real airplane especially because of how similar it looks some little things like the flight controls and being able to use the rudder and things being in different places, but I think it's a great experience for someone to have before they set foot in the airplane. So I had a great time. I had to go catch another flight. I'll see you guys. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. And if you like this video, then make sure you subscribe. And you know what? Check the playlist out. There's plenty more. Go on, have fun. Keep watching. Love this video.